Hi there and welcome to Bustinet. On today's show, we're going to talk about the Mazala. The Mazala plays like a playmaker. He is a very graceful player, creative, technically gifted. This player is expected to have very good first touch and technique on the ball. He can do the unexpected with his flair. He's intelligent enough to know when he's supposed to drop back, when he's supposed to get into the box, and he's extremely creative. A good example of the classic Mazala, Gianni Rivera of AC Milan. If you can get your hands on the match between AC Milan and Ajax in 1969, you would have seen the classic battle between Johan Cruyff and Gianni Rivera. The Mazala is a player who controls the ball well and uses that skill to either find others with the ball or uses his talent to get past players. In the modern game, the classic Mazala may not be as common as defenses are now more aggressive. There's still a place for the Mazala in the final third as this is a player who can keep the ball and support attacks like Gini Vinaldum or attack boxes like David Silva or Nabi Keita. The Mazala can receive the ball in wider areas of the pitch and depending on your system, you will find that the Mazala is a pretty good role for controlling half spaces. The Mazala has been one of my favourite roles since it was introduced. There are plenty of myths about the Mazala and how it should be combined with other roles and I'll deal with them later. But meanwhile here, let's uh, try and identify what the Mazala actually does. Now, the Mazala is hard-coded to move into channels. This means he moves between the defender and the fullback in the wider positions. He also has an instruction that tells him to stay wider. This is a significant instruction that is hard-coded into his behaviour. So you need to understand what this means. This means that uh, when your team has possession of the ball, there will be times when the Mazala goes wide. This is the reason why there are so many myths on the forum. The Mazala is a very technical role. This is a player that's as good as a playmaker, but has a, f but has a lot of flair. You can generally play any playmaker in this role, provided he has uh, certain other attributes. Here we have a Mazala who's sitting in a 4-1, 2-1. And he receives, when he receives the ball, he's going to drive into the pitch because he's got an attack duty. He's going to go attacking into the pitch, looking for opportunities to pass the ball. Mazala can cover a fair bit of ground in the game. Uh, so you definitely are looking for a player who's going to have good work rate and natural fitness. These are going to be important attributes for the Mazala, including stamina. Whether you use a Mazala on attack or support duties, if he has the gets into opposition area player trait, he can be very dangerous as he arrives late to score goals. The Mazala has a lot of influence over half spaces as his heat map will show. You're going to hear lots of people saying that a Mazala and a Playmaker cannot be combined, but this shows a fundamental lack of understanding of the Mazala's role. The Mazala has stay wide locked into his instructions, so he will go wider to receive the ball before he starts to cut inside, and this creates space for other players. This is something that we need to understand so that we can combine the Mazala with other roles. Now I'm going to show you how I combine a Mazala and a Playmaker in a 4-1-2-3. The playmaker has been given a sit narrow instruction. Remember, the Mazala likes to stay wide. This is going to bring these players quite close together uh, and they're going to be able to do a little pass, give and get, give and go in the final third of the pitch. This will allow the team to keep the ball and we will actually have a fullback going down the flank to deliver a cross. This is all created by the movement of the Mazala and the playmaker. The playmaker has moved forward now and the playmaker is going to work with the fullback to deliver the cross and the Mazala has made his way to the box to uh, wait for the cross and he scores the goal. Now let's take a look at the attributes. Uh, passing, vision, decision, they're all standard for any kind of a playmaker. So you got you got to have them in there for the Mazala. But what's more important for me for Mazala is the fact that he's always under pressure. He's going to have players around him. So he's got to be able to hold on to the ball. First touch, balance and composure are the three attributes that you need to look at. Then you've got to look at the Mazala because he's going to have to do the unexpected. Flair becomes very important. Because the Mazala, he's, he does unexpected things. You know, you could do him a, he could do a Cruyff turn with players around him. So these are things that we really, really want to see in a Mazala. Now, if you have a Mazala and he doesn't have good off the ball, then you really can't use him. So off the ball also becomes very, very important. Now, what about dribbling, finishing? Now, if you have a Mazala who can, who has got good dribbling, he gives you more options. He can carry the ball and bring it to the box. So your team could be playing it with run and defense, uh, and uh, he would be he would be affected by it. So he he could take the ball from outside the box and then dribble into the box to score. So 
This is why flair is so important. Flair becomes a very important attribute because you really want the Mazala to do the unexpected. When you when you have a when you have a player like a Mazala in your team, you have plenty of options, and he's like a second playmaker. Which is why one of the reasons why uh, I love the Mazala is because he gives me lots of options when it comes to roles and combinations. You can play a Mazala in a system. A Mazala can combine very well with other playmakers. He can also combine uh, because he stays wider. You can combine him with a winger. You can combine him with an inside forward. On the on either flank, you can play him as part of a four-one-four-one uh, as well, and the Mazala will hug wide, and he can combine well with other roles. Uh, one of the one of my favorite uh, combinations, uh, it has been my favorite combination since uh, FM eighteen when the Maza seventeen I think when the Mazala was introduced, is the playmaker Mazala combination. It's a very good combination. I mean, all of them are good. The Mazala, the inside forward, the Mazala, the winger, and the Mazala and the AP. But this is where people need to understand. Um, there's been a myth going around the forums which says you cannot combine the two because those two are going to be in the same position. This is a uh, myth. Why? Because both of these players are very good at keeping the ball. Secondly, the, the, the issue that most people have is because this guy's in a wider position and this guy's got to stay wider, they think that they are going to you know, lock horns and fight over the ball. Uh, this couldn't be further from the truth. All you got to do is ask him to sit narrower. So when he sits narrower, the Mazala now has the space to stay in wider positions. So what will happen is that the Mazala and the Playmaker will work together to use the ball. In my Liquid 4-1, Two, three. I like to use the Mazala with a winger. Now, why have I specifically chosen a winger? Because the winger has uh, starts out with stay wider, but I pick cuts inside with the ball. So now, when the when the winger has the ball, he cuts inside. The Mazala might stay wide, or he might go inside as well. So there's a lot of movement going on between the two roles because the Mazala uh, stays wider. Then he, if he gets the ball, he moves inside the box. And then the winger has a stay wider instruction and then he gets cuts in a, I insist on put, applying cuts inside because now when he gets the ball, he drives inside giving the Mazala lots of space. So the Mazala can move, interchange uh, spots with the winger, which is the reason why people seem to like the Mazala in the inside forward combination because it's the, it's the one combination that doesn't require you to apply any uh, PIs. Uh, which is the reason why you see a lot of people going, you should combine the Mazala with, with an inside forward. The Mazala and the inside forward is a very straightforward combination. Inside forward goes is is gonna cut inside with the ball. Mazala might stay wide and sometimes they might clash, right? But generally they can work together. So a Mazala can work in a lot of configurations. The whole goal is to understand what the Mazala actually does. The Mazala is a player that's like a playmaker. He's gonna help you keep the ball. And this is where I when it comes to the Liverpool side and people talk about uh Mazalas, I actually like Ginny Winaldum. When I first picked up the safe, uh, Gini Windaldum was, uh, uh, was my Mazala because he's very good at keeping the ball. Another similar player that could be a Mazala is Manchester City's David Silva. Now, all, both of these players are extraordinarily good at holding on to the ball. Now, here, there are certain things we need to understand when we use the Mazala. Right? When we use the Mazala, we've got to accept the fact that there are times when he might not come back in defense. So, whichever flank you have the Mazala on, you've got to be thinking about placing better defenders there who are good at covering for the Mazala if he goes missing. So here in our system, we might be using the liquid system, we use a Mazala and we have an inside uh, inverted wing back behind him. Sometimes I, I place uh, players closer up in an overlap instruction to help the Mazala out, so to give the Mazala more options to pass the ball. But that is very risky. So uh, like in this system, if I were to... In this system, if I were to use a Mazala, and I would use an inverted wing back on support or inverted wing back on attack. It becomes a very, very dangerous setup. But it is also an extraordinarily powerful setup because the inverted wing back will come into this position. Mazala and the AP will swap, creating a lot of strange patterns here that are very hard for the AI to pick up. And um, it becomes a, a very powerful system. I've been noticing lately that the AI has been doing this in some of its default tactics, which explains why we get getting some interesting uh, variations of tactics with some teams, not with every team in the, in, the, in the game, but there are some teams that are coming up with some interesting variations on the inverted wing back and the Mazala combination in the game. In this variation of a 4-2-3-1, I could use a Mazala with a central midfielder on support and have an inverted wing back giving him support on this side so he keeps the, keeps the flank uh, locked down. 
Uh, this allows my attacking playmaker to have plenty of options. The winger is going to be wide. The Mazala will come into this position. The inverted wing will come into this position when we have the ball. So there are lots of small little passing patterns that are available with the Mazala in different kinds of situations. What you have to remember is the Mazala needs to be able to keep the ball. So he's got to have very good balance first touch. He's got to be able to move around. His off the ball becomes extremely important. And this allows you to use the Mazala in a, in a lot of ways. But when you use the Mazala, you just have to remember that on the side where the Mazala is playing, you re really need players who can cover the slack in case you need to defend that side of the pitch. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little guide on the Mazala and how you can make him play in your system. If you have any questions, please look me up on Twitter at Bustanet or addictedtofm.com or website. Once again, I want to thank all my patrons for their continued support of this channel. You made this kind of show possible for the rest of the community. You guys take care. Have a good one. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.